they put them on my chest and that made the whole thing worth it. it made the whole pregnancy worth it the whole labor everything in my life worth it <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Audrey and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys my healing VBAC birth story. So if you are somebody who is looking to have a VBAC birth and you're nervous and you just want to hear some positive stories, then this video is for you. So a little bit of background about me. I am a mom of two now and so my first daughter was born via cesarean in January 2020 and my son was just born this past month of September um, 2022 so he came via a successful VBAC so I'm going to tell you guys exactly how it all went down I actually did share my birth vlog already so a lot of this information is going to be very similar but I wanted to make a separate sit down video with all the details just in case there's anybody who is looking to hear even more information about my experience and to get some ideas of what they can expect so if you're new to my channel, I do make family vlogs with my husband and my two kids. And so if you guys want to subscribe after watching this video, definitely subscribe down below to keep up with our family. So now I'm just going to get straight into it. So a little background, like I said, my daughter was born via cesarean in 2020 and it was because she was breech. So she came at 37 and a half weeks because she was head up and my water broke. And so then I just went to the hospital and six hours later I had a c-section and she was born so the reason why I was so adamant about having a VBAC which is a vaginal birth after cesarean this time around is because I really had a lot of trauma from that c-section birth so for me when I was preparing for birth I did not think I would have a c-section I didn't even entertain the idea of it um, so I didn't really prepare for it. I was just thinking of having a natural unmedicated birth, which is kind of funny. We'll get to why that's funny in a minute, but That's all I thought about and I was so excited to have it um, Because I wanted that golden moment where you hold your baby after they're born and I knew that a c-section a lot of the time you don't get to hold a baby, so I wanted a, a natural birth didn't happen i did have a c-section and i did not hold my daughter and like i said it was very traumatic for me it was something that haunted me for many many months over a year i was like still crying about it and so when i got pregnant this time with my son i said i really want a v-back so i told my doctor right away when i went for my first appointment i said i'm gonna be trying for a v-back do you think it's okay and he said yeah because based on the reason for your first c-section you're a good candidate for a VBAC birth so the reason was not an emergency or anything like scary it was just she was head up so they said I was a good candidate and so he seemed to be on board with me having a VBAC so that was good so throughout my pregnancy I stayed healthy as much as I could of course like having a toddler it's a little bit different like second pregnancy I didn't have a ton of time to focus on myself in my pregnancy because I was chasing my daughter around but I think that actually helped because it kept me active <laughs> so even though I wasn't exercising I still stayed active and healthy during my pregnancy leading up to my feedback so then fast forward to like now September my due date was September 10th and I really thought he was gonna come early because my daughter came early so I was really prepared like at 35 weeks <laughs> and then all the weeks leading up I was just like oh my god where is this baby so then as it got closer and closer I started joking saying maybe he's waiting for Labor Day because Labor Day was on September 5th so I said oh maybe he's he's just waiting for Labor Day because like labor so the night before I went into labor was September 4th and I had been going on nightly walks with my neighbor to just stay active and kind of help move things along. I did something called curb walking which I heard people said helps induce labor which is like there's a curb right it's like this and you just walk like one foot up here and one foot down here and you just walk along. I did that and then I went home went to bed and then at 
two o'clock on the dot, I felt a pop and I said, uh-oh, I know what that is. So I quickly got out of bed and waddled to the bathroom and I made it to the toilet just before my waters came out. So with my daughter, my water also broke. So I knew when I felt that pop, I knew. And I immediately just started laughing because it was Labor Day, 2 a.m. on Labor Day. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I guess. He really was waiting for Labor Day, so that was pretty funny. So I called the doctor, he said to come to the hospital right away just because second babies come faster and also I had a C-section before so they want me to just be there right away. I kind of wanted to stay home so I took my time getting ready. I took a shower, washed my hair and everything and then it was 3.15 when we left the house and the drive to the hospital was only like 18 minutes. It wasn't super far. And there's nobody on the road obviously at 3 a.m. and so as we were in the car and started driving contractions started and they were five minutes apart and I was like oh my god this baby's like coming <laughs> coming fast he's coming in hot so we got to the hospital I had had three contractions on the way to the hospital we checked in and like I was just in good spirits really excited like you would think you'd be more like I'd be more nervous but I was just like excited because I couldn't wait to meet him. So we checked in, they took me to observation to see if I was dilated and check the waters, which obviously the waters did break, it was water everywhere. <laughs> and um, so they checked me, I was three centimeters already. This was around 4.30 in the morning, I think between 4, 4.30. And so then, yeah, it was go time. So they had me do a COVID test, um, a PCR test because I did have COVID two months prior so I guess they were just making sure it didn't come back positive which it didn't so thank god so I did a COVID test and then I was ready to do this thing so I was so adamant about not taking pain medication because I heard like it's not good for the baby it can make them drowsy or whatever like when they're born it might be giving you trouble with breastfeeding so i was like oh yeah i'm gonna do this without the epidural i'll be fine i took a hypnobirthing class to prepare like get my mindset ready and let me just say i was not prepared for the pain of labor so i labored until i guess it was like 6 or 6 30 and I was in good spirits. We had music on. I was up out of bed, like dancing around. I was eating a little bit of a snack because I could eat at that point. And then shit got real, real painful. Oh my God. So my contractions were insane. And the nurse said it was probably because my water had broken a while ago. And so there was no cushion left really. Like, I mean, there's still some water. There's, it replenishes, but like there's less water than if it had not broken so that's why it was probably extremely painful for me and I was trying 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 to just like stay calm and and just get through it but it came to a point where I just started crying and I said to my husband I said I can't do this I really like I'm gonna cry now remembering how emotional I was because I was I was really dead set on doing this like no epidural I thought like if your mind is strong enough you can do anything right well, <laughs> maybe not everything. So finally, when the nurses switched at seven, the new nurse comes in and I'm just there like sobbing, like, oh, I can't do this. This is terrible. She must have thought I was crazy. And she was like, it's okay. Just like, don't close your eyes during the contractions. Cause I was like closing my eyes. And she's like, if you close your eyes, it's gonna be more painful because then all you're focusing on is your pain. But at that point, I was just like so over it and I was like, I need the epidural. So I told them, they gave me two options. They said one option, they could put something in the IV that would help with pain management. Um, but it wasn't like a full, like, I don't know, it was like some like, I don't even understand what it was. It was like something where they could only give it to me now and then as I got closer to pushing, they would have to stop. And I was like, you know what? just give me the full epidural just give it to me because I'm dying <laughs> like, I literally said I was dying because I was I felt like I was dying it was so painful 
So they gave me the epidural and I, I cried and cried and cried because I, I just felt almost like I had failed at that point, even though like I hadn't even gone to the birth part yet, but I felt like such a failure. I was like, I, I should have been able to do this. Like I should have been stronger. But at that point I decided it was worth getting it because my ultimate goal was to have a vaginal birth that resulted in me holding my son immediately. That's the, the main thing I wanted. Healthy baby, healthy mom, baby in arms after vaginal birth. That was it. So I said, you know what? Let's take the epidural and we'll get through this. So he came in, he placed it. It was so scary. I hate it. Oh my God. Like you have to stay still, but it's so hard to stay still when your body is like, <laughs> felt like it was like getting broken in half. So I stayed still, he put it in, and then within a few minutes, I started to feel good and relaxed. So after that, I laid down and I just, I had calmed down, like I wasn't crying anymore, I wasn't in pain anymore, and I just said, okay, now it's time to rest, so that way, when we do get to pushing, I won't be dead. So. I was five centimeters at that time when I got the epidural. So I had made it like halfway <laughs> without the epidural. So then I just laid, you know, I laid in bed, um, labored, and they kept, they, they came and checked me a few times. So <clears throat> around, I think 10 o'clock, so I took the epidural at eight. Around 10 o'clock, something was happening um, where I would have a contraction and then after the contraction the baby's heart rate would dip down so the doctor and the nurse came in they were like hey let's check you and let's see because something's not right right now so he checked me I was at seven centimeters at that point so I had been progressing like right along which is good because I was so afraid like if my body didn't progress and then that would be the reason for a c-section but anyways so he said he, he kind of seemed like a little worried, my doctor. And he was like, you know, this could end up being a C-section. Like he's like, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It could be a C-section. Something weird is happening with his heart rate. We're gonna watch it and see. But at this point, you know, it could go either way. Like we don't know yet. So the nurse decided to like help me change positions to see if the baby would tolerate labor a little better. So I was like on my back before and then she helped me to turn like to this side and then to my back and then to this side. So like I needed help to move in bed because I couldn't even feel my legs. So every time we would change positions, he would be okay again for like 20 minutes. So contractions would be going and going and going and they can see the screen outside. So they would leave and then they would come back because like, uh oh, something's happening again. And it was so stressful. Like we were just laying there, like I was laying there and my husband, he, he was watching the monitor to see the heart rate. And I kept just asking, is it okay? Is it okay? And, he, and he'd be like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And then he'd be like, oh no, it's going down again. They're gonna come back. So then she would keep coming back, helping me out to switch the position. And then around noon time, the doctor came back and checked me again. I was at a nine. And he said, okay, at this point, since we've been able to manage his heart rate up until this point, I don't see why we can't continue. But if you feel nervous and you want a C-section, just say it and we'll do a C-section. And I said, you know, I thought about it and I thought, well, we're already this far, we're nine centimeters. I just need one more centimeter and I can push. So I said, okay, let's just keep going and doing what we're doing. And the reason I kind of chose that is also because the doctor didn't seem as worried at this point because he, I think he knew like probably we would be fine to, to make it through. So I said, okay, let's just push through. So we waited another hour and a half, I guess, um, until 1.40. And then at 1.40, I was finally a 10 centimeters dilated and I guess it's called like two station. Like you have to get to three station when the head is coming down or something. So that's what they were saying. They were saying 10 centimeters and two, you're at a two. So we're gonna start pushing. So first couple pushes were practice pushes, <laughs> didn't really do anything. Um, the nurse was just kind of watching to see how I'm doing. 
and the doctor wasn't even there because I guess they knew the baby wasn't coming right away. Then I started pooping all over the place and they were like, yeah, that's it. That's the point. Yeah, keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, here comes some more poop. <laughs> so like I at that point, I kind of like found where I was supposed to be pushing. So that was good, but it was a little awkward because like they kept wiping my butt. <laughs> Like I, I didn't see, but I knew, and I was like, oh, whatever. I'm not I, like in the moment. You don't really care because it's just like you can't control it. <laughs> but yeah, I was pooping everywhere. Then I was pushing, 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 and so what was happening is the doctor would come, and he was on this side, and the nurse was on this side. So they would each hold my feet up, like, like way up, so my knees were way up. And then the doctor would tell me to push when I felt the contraction. And then they would do the counting, the count to 10 thing. So it was nice because I got to choose when to push. Like they weren't like, okay, now push when it wasn't time. Like I could just wait until I could, cause I could still, like I didn't feel pain, but I could still feel when the contraction was happening. So I could kind of know when it was time to do the push. So every time the contraction came, I pushed really hard and things started moving <laughs> things meaning the baby started going down 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 and coming out so I could kind of feel like which pushes were better than others because I could feel the movement of the baby coming down again with no pain thank god um, and then like they the doctor was like really encouraging like the nurse she was okay she was nice but the doctor is probably the reason why I was so good at pushing is because he was just so nice and he would like cheer me on. He was like, oh no, this is really good. You're doing it, you're doing it, keep going. And so it just kind of gave me the boost I needed to keep going. And then I think there was a point where he was looking and he could see the head. Like they could see the head and I, that's, I started crying because I was so excited. I knew he was almost here. Like I'm gonna cry just remembering that. Oh my God. <laughs> And they were like, come on, like focus, focus. Cause I was like, oh my baby. <laughs> he wasn't even out yet, but yeah, I was so excited. <laughs> so then I kept pushing and then it got to the point where the baby was pretty much coming out. So he said push and then he was like, stop. And then he's like, okay, now push again. <laughs> Cause he had to catch the baby and baby came out. And then the doctor said, Mom, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes and he lifted him up and he started crying. And I was like, oh my God, that's my baby. And then like two seconds later, they put him on my chest. And that made the whole thing worth it. It made the whole pregnancy worth it, the whole labor, everything in my life worth it. Like I'm gonna cry. Whew, because that is what I should have had the first time. So. I'm really emotional about it because it it truly healed me to have this experience, this this V back experience. I had always dreamed of the moment of holding my baby when they were born. I didn't get that with my daughter. With my daughter, I didn't get to hold her for two hours because I was throwing up after the surgery. I was throwing up everywhere. But this was completely different. As soon as I held him, I didn't have a worry in the world. I felt no pain. I felt no fear. I felt nothing except for joy and bliss and happiness. And he was so cute. And I was just so, I, I told him I was so proud of him for coming out. Like, yeah, like he did a good job. He, he made the journey down, he came out. And then they, um, like after a few minutes, they took him to weigh him. And like at that point, I was okay with that because I had had some time with him. He was all gross, like with the, with all the yucky stuff on him. He had like blood on his head and, and the vernix everywhere. He was like sticky. But I was just so happy. I couldn't believe that he was here and we were meeting him. So... I took him and weighed him. He was 7 pounds, 13 ounces, 19 and 3 quarters inch long. Looked amazing. He had like the cone head from coming out. But other than that, everything was good. His APGARD score was 9-9, nine, nine, which they don't really do 10 because nobody's perfect. <laughs> so that's pretty much a perfect score, a 9-9. Nine, nine. 
So yeah, he came and then I breastfed him and it was just, again, another stark difference because with my daughter, I could not breastfeed her because I was so out of it and dead. Um, I had her at 2.43 in the morning and then I was throwing up. Like, so I had been awake the whole day before. My water broke at eight. My surgery was at two. She was born at 2.43. I threw up for a few hours and then it was like 5 a.m. and they were trying to make me breastfeed and I blacked out. I like couldn't do it. This time, I got that moment with him. He went on, I don't know how his latch was, but he tried, he was so cute. And then, you know, we got our bonding time in the room before they moved us over to the recovery suite. And when they did that, you know, they wheeled me in the wheelchair and it was like so emotional because like all the staff was like cheering, clapping and saying congratulations as we rolled by. And then they have this new feature at my hospital. They didn't have it last time where they have this hallway where the dad gets to push a special button and then it makes some music and some lights, either pink or blue for whatever gender you had. And so yeah, there was like lights, blue lights and we were just going down the, the blue lights and then she took our picture. And it was just like such a nice celebration and such a great like end of my birth experience. So we went to um, recovery and then we just rested and enjoyed him. So I am going to make a separate video about my postpartum recovery and how that experience was, especially in contrast to my C-section recovery because it is completely different. Right now I am three weeks and four four days postpartum and I feel amazing like I do not feel like I pushed a human out of my vagina three weeks ago <laughs> I feel like normal like myself and so I'm going to talk a lot about that in my next video installment about postpartum recovery but that is my healing VBAC birth story I hope that it has helped you if you are pregnant and you are excited to meet your baby but you're maybe a little nervous about how it's gonna go if you chose the v-back or even if you're just having a baby for the first time it doesn't even have to be a v-back i just hope that this positive birth story helps whoever's watching to feel a little bit less scared and more confident and excited about what's to come um it is super scary i will admit like not knowing when labor's gonna start how things are gonna go um if the baby's okay, like what the recovery is going to be like, but just try not to think too far ahead and hopefully everything will be great. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below to my channel to follow our family's story, our vlogs and everything. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.